two, one. And my foot was just like dangling. Oh, this you crazy mother. Yo! Hey, lady. You don't have OCD. You forgot your spaghetti. You have OBCD. Okay, thank you. I didn't know my psychiatrist was on here. I'm Ashley's Darwin. That should be my middle name. Amberlynn Hungry Reed. <laughs> I don't know, I just feel so disconnected. She was like, you're healthy. But you are obese. Hello? Is anyone home? Hey, girls. Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. Our girl has just been sitting at her standing desk talking about the same things so she's been just a tad boring lately, but she's been staying consistent in that she doesn't seem to think that she has binge eating disorder anymore and is now calling it food addiction. So with that being said, I think it's time we check in with her, let's start with yesterday's video. I don't want to buy like, tons of food at once, and I also don't want to physically go to the grocery store because by buying tons of food at once um not only is it like overwhelming it's like oh my god i have to cook <sighs> it's gonna prevent me from binging because i'm not gonna have like super large quantities i guess i spoke too soon because now she is back to calling them binges i saw lots of comments saying she is suddenly backtracking because binge eating would disqualify her from getting weight loss surgery so maybe she just forgot to law today also, getting out and grocery shopping would be so beneficial for her, but she avoids the things that could help her the most, just like the sit and pedal gift that would help her ankle. So I did get an Instacart. Um, so don't come for me, okay? Because I, I feel like I know what my triggers are and I'm trying to like shy away from those things and like going to the grocery store and like walking past the candy aisle or the chip aisle or seeing something that I'm currently craving. Um, I don't want to have that. I used to drink like no water and about four diet sodas a day, sometimes five. Now my goal is just to have like one or two. If I take a sip of drink, that means I have to take a sip of water. And it's been helping me drink more water. And it's also really good um, to practice my sips because when I get weight loss surgery, I'm not gonna be able to take, take normal drinks. I'm not gonna be able to like gulp my drinks. I can only sip. So usually when I have like a water goal, I can just chug this in one, call today, be like, all right, I got my 16 ounces done for. I'll move on to my next 16 ounces in a couple hours. But I'm having to just like all day constantly sip, sip. So now we're chasing our pop with water Whatever, it's not the worst idea she's ever had. I think one of the worst ideas was buying a mini fridge to stock with water so that it's always at her disposal, just to never use it. But since I'm having to like truly absorb like, hey, sip, 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 it's just been a lot more effort, but take a sip. It is what it is. Um, today is actually February 1st, so I did weigh myself and I was 5.11.6. So that means just since Sunday, by the way, today is Wednesday, just since Sunday, I'm down over four pounds. Your girl's doing it, okay? She's doing it. Something sort of clicked um, recently and I'm just glad because it's like, I am fighting for my life. I am fighting to get weight loss surgery and I'm fighting to lose weight. I'm fighting to improve my health. I need to do better, be better. And I feel like the choices that I am making currently are really good. And I'm just really proud of myself for that. A lot of things I already know about nutrition, like being a yo-yo dieter. So a psychologist was supposed to call me to schedule a appointment. And they said um, at the weight loss clinic, they were like, they're gonna call between one to five business days. And it's been a little bit longer than that. So, you know, I took it upon myself to call because they said that if they don't call within that time frame, just give it a couple days and then you can go ahead and call. So I decided to call. If you're new to the Amberverse, usually when she over explains and starts to ramble, it means she's lying. Professionals supposedly not answering her phone calls, but also not calling her back is a common theme you'll notice with her stories. 
the person that like schedules appointments actually wasn't there today which was quite unfortunate um so they're actually going to be for sure calling me on monday because the person who was there um left a note and then also emailed the person about it so i'm super excited um for that monday call because your girl is so ready and i just feel so good you guys like i finally just feel losing weight is all about that discomfort because people fail at weight loss because they give in to their cravings and they overindulge and they eat too many calories period that is how you gain weight <laughs> you eat too many calories and it's simple say no <laughs> like when you are ready and you are passionate about your life and saving it then the no is simple <laughs> it feels like I'm rapidly losing weight and I'm accepting it as what it is. I don't even care. As you guys know, I was like freaked out about the whole rapid weight loss because of my gallstones, but I don't care. There's surgery for that. I have insurance for that. I don't care. I'm saving my life. Yeah, I just feel so good. I don't I don't know how to explain it. I also honestly think it's because I stopped getting um as you guys know, I was doing a lot of Delta 8. She claims she was becoming addicted to this stuff and just like that. She was able to quit and she says she doesn't even want it anymore and she feels so much better. I really wish she could do the same in other areas of her life. But anyways we are moving on to the next video which is her weigh-in video where she doesn't actually weigh in she just tells us a number. And we're supposed to believe it. <laughs> Since I've gone through menopause, I don't take estrogen anymore. My hair texture is the worst it's ever been. And I think this is one of the big reasons why I wear my hair up in poop bun all the time. And it has like these little tiny curls that I don't know where they came from. <laughs> I felt like I needed to wear my hair down more because poop bun is making me feel self-conscious as well. So it's like, when do we win here what's helping you this time a lot of people say one day at a time i disagree i feel like it's one discomfort at a time girl no we are just in that phase of the cycle where she's all hyped and motivated and knows nutrition better than all of you so when i feel the urge to eat when it's just like out of boredom or out of like emotional eating or just like the food addict in me that is the discomfort I'm talking about. Normally, I would just cave into those cravings, I would cave into those feelings, and I would just eat because, not because I was hungry. Listen, it's not when I'm hungry. That's like the deciding factor here. If I'm hungry, obviously I'm gonna eat something, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna choose healthier options. Protein, fruit, veggies. Like if I'm hungry, it's not like my standard meal time, then I will allow myself to eat one of those things. But what I mean by like discomfort is when I just wanna eat to eat. It's the food addict. I'm not actually hungry. It's more so head hunger and not like true body hunger. I'm this size because normally I would never have that discomfort. I would never allow myself to become uncomfortable because I would just cave and I'd be like, oh, I want hot Cheetos, sure. Oh, I want chocolate, sure. Oh, I want to order takeout, sure. But saying no is where I become uncomfortable and there's a discomfort feeling. It's just one of those at a time. And I want to say in a day, I probably have up to five and they don't last long they don't at all to finally be successful something has to click up here and something clicked for me and it's the fact that i just i beat discomfort 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 girl i think we are getting a little ahead of ourselves here i wouldn't say only one month in that you've beat anything and this is the mentality that always gets her in trouble because she starts to think she can do this on her own which almost never works for anyone in addiction especially in the beginning this is something that will take a long time to beat and something she may struggle with for the rest of her life. But she doesn't have to do it alone and inpatient before surgery would benefit her greatly. But I have come to terms that that is what is holding me back and that is what has been messing me up because every time I feel that uncomfortable feeling and I have to sit there with my feelings and I have to sit there and process why do you really want to eat right now because your ass is not hungry. This is the healthiest mindset wise the healthiest I have been with food, I think, my whole life. I am understanding nutrition more because I now see a dietitian um, at the weight loss clinic where I want to get weight loss surgery, and I took a dietitian course. And everything that I have known before, 
I was obviously right. There has been more times than I can count when I would be sitting there reading the comments and they were just like mean over and over and over making me feel just horrible about myself and I would turn to food to numb that and to feel better. I, it, things aren't complicated. I know what I'm allowed to eat and I know what triggers me so I don't have those things. It's really not that complicated. I know how to have normal servings and it's feeling good on my body. It's showing up on the scale. When is the last time you binged? I have not binged. Oh my gosh. It's, I think it's been three weeks, two weeks, two to three weeks. So there is a such thing as someone who binges versus someone who has binge eating disorder. Those two things can happen separately. And what I mean by that and what I have recently learned and actually what my psychologist has told me as well is that you don't have to have binge eating disorder to binge on occasion. So is she now saying she just binges but doesn't have binge eating disorder? If you check out my video Amberlynn's Biggest Laws Part 2, you'll see her claim that she had just been diagnosed with bed on at least three separate occasions. She has claimed this diagnosis since she started her channel and used it as her number one reason as to why she could never lose weight. She has said for years that any negative comment was fat phobic because she has a disorder and can't control it. The stories always change to benefit her at that moment in time. And there were times during my appointments with my psychologist where she did present me with, it sounds to me like you just binge on occasion. And you know what? I think I used binge eating disorder as a crutch and as an excuse and ultimately as denial now on to my weight so last sunday i was 515.0 after losing five pounds that week so yay me and today i was 508.2 so that's 6.8 pounds down in one week so that's pretty much seven pounds <laughs> I need people to know that, like, mental things are it's scary, like. There are girls outside right now that are taking selfies in front of a rock wall. This is my life, and I do what I want. 